A big potential update to AMD's GPUs gives it the possibility of taking over everything. We have leaked Elden Ring footage and the first day of Epic versus Apple. Let's get into the hot news, my friends. I am your host, Brett. We're gonna be going over the hottest tech news that I could find on the internet and keep it condensed so that you can get on with your day. Let's jump into the big story of the day, which is about AMD's RDNA 3, specifically the Navi 33 variant. If those numbers mean nothing to you, let me explain for just a second. Right now we are on RDNA 2, which is the current RX 6000 series lineup from AMD. A Navi 33 would be the smaller end chips, thinking like the RX 6700 XT, as opposed to Navi 31, which would be the big boy, which would be the 7900 XT. That's the general gist of what we're going on here. And the reason this matters is because the rumor that's come out from a well-known leaker in the past says that Navi 33 is equivalent to Navi 21 plus the next-gen IP core. So essentially saying that the mid tier card is going to have the same amount of cores as the high tier card that we have currently, plus getting all the benefits of the IPC increase on RDNA 3, which then leads to the question of if the high tier then becomes the mid tier, what happens to the high tier of the next generation? And that's the exciting part because there's been some indication that RDNA 3 will have what's known as a multi-chip module, which basically means you take one big core, you take another big core, you punch them together, and you get the Super Saiyan 7900 XT from AMD, which could potentially be double the performance because it has double the cores, you add in the IPC increase, and we could be looking at a monster of a 7000 series from AMD if they found a way to reliably fusion dance their GPUs and bring those out. The current indication is that they likely won't be rolling out until the end of next year. AMD seems to be putting the brakes on launching GPUs, especially with everything that's going on in the market. There's also been some indication that Ampere which is NVIDIA's GPUs, will be on the market for a long shelf life as well. So it looks like we're gonna be scrounging at different bits and pieces to get a semblance of what's going on for 12 to 15 months. Now that we got that meaty story out of the way, let's talk about today's episode sponsor, ButcherBox, because it's the easiest way that you can get meat delivered right to your door. ButcherBox is a meat delivery service where you get to choose what meat you want it included. You don't have to go to the grocery store and it's high quality meat. It's grass fed beef, free range organic chicken, pork that's been raised crate free and wild caught seafood. And it's more than affordable coming in at under $6 per meal plus free shipping. Plus if you use our link in the video description, you can get two pounds of pork chops up to three pounds of chicken breast and two pounds of ground beef for free in your first box. This is a service that my family regularly uses. This is how we get our meat delivered. We don't buy it at the grocery store anymore. We just have it delivered from ButcherBox and I'm so glad that they're a sponsor of today's episode of Hot News. Now let's talk a little bit more about AMD, but in a less positive light, RDNA 3, super exciting. Them pulling bio support for something that hardly affects them is less favorable. We talked about in a previous episode of Hot News that bio support was now enabled for certain X370 motherboards from ASRock with Ryzen 5000 series chips. This is a big Big deal because AMD didn't officially release the support, but getting a BIOS that could support it was exciting because then this can mean that older motherboards would have a chance at supporting the latest chips, which is something that a lot of people expected AMD promised them when they first bought their X370 motherboards back in the day. Well, it turns out according to the report that Unfortunately, we've received AMD's warnings that X370 shouldn't support these CPUs. Obviously, some customer didn't operate it under the table. AMD noticed and said ASRock shouldn't do this anymore. And so the BIOS files have been pulled. And if you look at the Reddit thread on this matter, it's a less than favorable light cast onto AMD for pulling support for something that functionally doesn't really affect them that much. The only real explanation that I can come up with conceptually is that this might affect warranty numbers, especially with VRMs not being slated to handle the most recent Ryzen chips, it can make it so that there's a higher chance of RMA for motherboards released that were X370 purchased late. There's a lot of people in the Reddit thread that are expressing displeasure at the fact that the Crosshair 6 Hero and Extreme can't support the chips, especially since they were such beefy motherboards when they came out. What do you think of AMD pulling support for the X370 BIOSes down below in the comments? Let me know, I wanna hear from you on that. And PlayStation wants you to be able to hear your friends because they have officially partnered up with Discord. Yes, my friends, Discord is coming to your PlayStation. You can now talk with your friends in the app that a lot of people use and you can do it 
hopefully cross-platform. But if Sony had their way, they wouldn't want to cross-platform. We'll get into that when we talk about the Epic Games versus Apple situation. But let's talk about Intel because there's a new leaked die picture that shows that it's possible that Sapphire Rapids, which is going to be a high-end processor from Intel, will have 72 to 80 cores. I know this just looks like a piece of burnt toast, but this is the actual containment of what could potentially be more cores than what AMD offers, which is only 64 cores right now. The idea is that in these pictures, each chiplet is carrying 20 dies, which could mean that the highest end Sapphire Rapids processor could have 80 cores, which would be 25% than the highest AMD chip. And Intel's looking to secure their future, at least producing all of this stuff, with them announcing that they are going to be implementing a $3.5 billion investment into their New Mexico operations for their development of technologies like Foveros, the 3D packing technology, as well as them offering up 3,500 additional jobs in the state. This is a big investment by Intel. If we just compare this to Apple's latest announcement where they're only going to invest $1 billion into their North Carolina campus, this seems like a big move by Intel in supporting the local American economy. NVIDIA is not going to disrupt the economy of miners because according to a report, they're going to allow the AIB partners to determine whether or not they're disclosing whether each chip that they're selling in the GPUs has the mining hash rate limiter or not so that they can do the right marketing, let people know, hey, this is gonna earn you crypto coin, or hey, this isn't gonna earn you crypto coin. And hey, we got another announcement of a release date for the RTX 3080 and 3070 Ti. This is like the 85th one, so take this with as much preparation H as you need to, my friends. According to this latest report out of video cards, the 3080 and 3070 Ti have been delayed by a week. The 3080 Ti will be introduced on June 2nd, and 3070 Ti will be introduced on June 9th, so it's being delayed. Not like you're gonna be able to get them at all. So just hope on those days that you you know, you might want to see one one day in person. But if you live in New Zealand and Australia, you might be able to get your hands on the 3080 Ti much sooner because retailers have started posting listings of these cards on their websites and the prices are not good. It looks like the 3080 Ti is gonna cost between 1300 and 2200 US dollars. Obviously, this is not necessarily going to be representative of the entire world because Australian and New Zealand prices don't necessarily correlate with how everything else is going, but that's not boding well for pricing being in line with where you want it. And you want GameStop's pricing to be in line with the moon. Let's talk about the GameStop Bitcoin update. GameStop down 6.5% on the day. Not a good day for GameStop, but good day for crypto. Bitcoin up 0.75%, but the big story is rather Ethereum, which hit an all-time high, peaking at over $3,300, being just under $3,300 at the time of recording, and Dogecoin being also up 6% at $0.41. Cents. We'll keep track of all the money-making stuff that's going on, but you can't make money with Elden Ring because it doesn't exist yet. But now we have a six-second teaser that somebody appears to have recorded from internal testing of Elden Rings. You can watch this over and over and over again until, you know, potentially it comes out. Before March of 2022 is when we're expecting the game to come out, at least according to the company's uh, annual report. And Microsoft's reporting that they're bringing a lot more FPS boosts to games on the Xbox Series S and X, adding 74 new games to their service that essentially enables 60 FPS support on games that were previously locked. We'll leave a link in the video description for you to check out the games in case you have a Series S or X, and this matters a lot to you. And it looks like to Engadget, it matters that Verizon is selling its media business for $5 billion after splurging on AOL and Yahoo. This deal includes Engadget. They bought them for $9 billion, basically taking a bath on half the cost of the acquisition. They've sold it off to the investment firm Apollo Global Management, and Verizon will retain a 10% stake in the company, which is being rebranded as Yahoo. But Verizon now getting out of the digital media game, especially after a lot of prolific failures that they had over the years. And Twitter is hoping to make you into an audio unfailure, not failure. The success is what I'm looking for. Twitter rolling out audio spaces on mobile to anybody with over 600 followers with them saying that accounts with followers are more likely to have a better experience because the people who follow you want to talk to you. They also announced monetization opportunities where you could sell tickets 
to the spaces so that people are paying to be part of an event. Kind of, I guess you could do like an audio only concert if you're a band and make money by selling tickets that way. I'm not so sure of the entire monetization process there, but seems like it's working out. And what's out is the first day of the Epic Games versus Apple showdown. It started off about as civilized as you would expect because it turns out that the court forgot to mute the public line, which allowed 20 people to come in at a time. And as you can imagine, it was flooded with things like free Fortnite or bring back Fortnite on mobile, please judge, or playing Travis Scott music, or just, you know, a whole host of other things that children do. We're, we're over a year into the pandemic and these places haven't figured out that you have to mute things on Zoom. I don't get it. But also being disclosed in this is that Sony really, really hated crossplay on the PlayStation 4, but Epic Games was basically like, hey, you suck. We're big. You're going to have to kowtow to our expectations here with a letter being revealed saying, we love working with PlayStation. We want this to be a win win. The longer this drags out, it will be less so. I can't think of a scenario where Epic doesn't get what we want. That possibility went out the door for when Fortnite became the biggest game on PlayStation. Just a sassy, sassy letter from Epic Games to Sony on this matter. With him concluding the letter saying, let's make this a huge win for us all. Epic's not changing its mind on the issue, so let's just agree on it now. I love reading through this letter because it shows me that high profile executives kind of do email in a very similar way that I do. No nonsense, just get straight to the point and say, hey, you're gonna submit to us because we have more power and leverage than you. So shut up and take whatever offer we're giving you because this is a win-win financially for all of us. Which it certainly was for Epic Games with them being able to disclose that they made over $9 billion in the first two years of it being available, the revenue from Fortnite being an excessive amount of money. It also coming out that Apple and Epic at one point when they used to be better friends, that there was a possibility that there would be a subscription bundle, which include Apple Music, Apple TV Plus, and Fortnite Crew, so that you could get all of that rolled into one and be able to purchase it for $20 a month, which would have saved you six bucks. But it turns out that Apple and Epic Games were just never meant to be. Just like Stadia. Stadia has lost its product head. The vice president and head of product at Stadia has left the company. He was responsible for things like the consumer experience. I'm not exactly shocked here. And you shouldn't be shocked that there's a lot more vulnerabilities coming to your CPUs. You can check out yesterday's episode of Hot News to find out what I'm talking about because it looks like there might be some massive performance penalties for the CPU vulnerabilities. That could hurt you. Check it out. See you in tomorrow's episode, friends. Cheers.